gives you a detailed outline of how you should eat. Plate, which is a normal dinner plate set. And on forward, on those toes, your back, on your heels. Hey guys, uh, my name is Wes Pendleton. And my name is Kristen Inslee. And we are senior nutrition students here at ETSU. And we're going to talk to you a little bit today about portion sizes. All right, so I'm going to start things off with a brief discussion of how portion sizes have increased throughout the years. Then I'll talk a little bit about the recommended servings of each food group and what constitutes a serving. Kristen's going to jump back in and she's going to talk a little bit about estimating portion sizes and then she's going to have some tips for us that we can use both at home and away from the home uh, for how to make sure that you're eating healthy, more sensible portions. All right, so throughout the years, portion sizes have increased. I mean, all you have to do is go to Starbucks. You can look in the uh, display case and see the oversized muffins. You see the foot-long sandwiches, the cookies that are about the size of a slice of bread, almost anywhere you go. Um, and so with these larger sizes of food, we are now eating more calories. So 20 years ago, a slice of pizza would have provided on average about 500 calories. Today, two slices of pizza would provide about 850 calories. So that's a 350 calorie increase. And if you're like most people, you don't just stop at two slices, so it can be even more than that. Bagels, 20 years ago, the average bagel was about three inches in diameter. So if you're in the grocery store, you're in the bread aisle, you see like the Sara Lee mini bagels, that was about the size of a bagel 20 years ago. Today, you get order a bagel at a store or you go to the grocery store and pick up some bagels and they're much larger than that. So today, we're consuming about 210 more calories per bagel. So in 2011, the USDA, or the US Department of Agriculture, introduced the MyPlate. Uh, this, for the most part, has taken the place of the food god pyramid that so many of us grew up with. And it was designed to provide us with more of a visual representation of what a plate should look like when we sit down to a meal. And we don't obviously eat full meals every time we eat, but it does provide you with a good idea of how much of each food group to include in your diet. So as you see with the plate, you have half of your plate is fruits and vegetables, a quarter of the plate is grains, another quarter is proteins, and then you have your dairy or your alternative dairy products such as your soy-based products. Um, on the diagram we have here, we've transposed over top of it the daily recommendations for each food group. So this is not at one meal. So each day you should try and consume three cups of dairy, about six ounces of grain, making half of those at least whole grains, five and a half ounces of protein, two and a half cups of vegetables, and two cups of fruit. So a serving size of grain is one ounce of grain. Now your grains can be divided into whole grains or refined grains, those being your white bread, your Ritz crackers, things like that. Um, whole grains, one ounce is considered a serving, and so one ounce would be about half a cup of brown rice, a slice of whole wheat bread, something about this size, uh, a half a cup of oatmeal, or maybe a cup of whole wheat cereal flakes. Um, as we mentioned earlier, muffins are one thing that has grown in size throughout the years. This here is about, if you can see this, is about what a muffin should look like. Uh, your refined grains also come in one ounce equivalents. Uh, so half a cup of cooked white rice would be considered a serving, one slice of white bread, maybe an eight inch diameter flour tortilla. So one ounce of protein is considered to be a serving of protein. And this could be one ounce of any meat, beef, pork, chicken, fish, uh, one egg would be considered one ounce, a half an ounce of nuts or seeds, a tablespoon of any kind of nut or seed butter, and then a quarter cup of cooked beans. Um, typically though, we don't eat one ounce of protein at a time very often, and so uh, typical portions would be a small steak or a small piece of chicken, about three ounces. So this would be about three ounces. Um, Three to four ounces of canned tuna would be considered a serving. Also a cup of soup beans, which would be about two ounces. Okay, for fruits and vegetables, uh, serving sizes are similar and they're also dependent kind of on the form in which the fruits and vegetables are consumed. So half a cup of cooked, fresh, uh, canned or frozen fruits and vegetables is considered a serving. 
three quarters of a cup or six ounces of fruit or vegetable juice as a serving, uh, one cup of any kind of raw leafy green vegetable like spinach or kale is considered to be a serving, and then also a quarter of a cup of dried fruit. Um, an example of a quarter of a cup of broccoli would be something like this. So this is considered to be a medium piece of fruit. This is one serving. Um, so this is a lot smaller than many of the oranges, the apples, the things we see in the grocery store. With the larger apples and oranges, you could always consider cutting them in half to cut down on the portion size. Um, for dairy or dairy alternative products, uh, one cup or eight ounces of milk or maybe soy milk or some sort of alternative rice milk is considered to be a serving. Also an eight ounce of a dairy-based or soy-based yogurt would be a serving. Two slices of cheese or half a cup of frozen yogurt. And then for our oils, we're recommended each day to get about six teaspoons of oil. Um, one medium avocado or a half of a medium avocado would provide three teaspoons of oil each day. Uh, a tablespoon of a mayo-based salad dressing, like ranch salad dressing, would provide one teaspoon of oil. So if you think about when you're adding salad dressing to your salad, we don't typically add one tablespoon at a time. And it's also important to remember that a lot of processed foods have added oils into them. And a lot of foods like nuts, avocado, as I've mentioned, uh, some fish, seeds, different foods naturally contain a lot of oils. So what does this all mean for us? Um, an extra 10 calories each day can lead over, over a year can lead to an extra pound in weight gain. So if you think about 100 pounds or 100 calories each day would lead to about 10 pounds over the course of a year. Uh, so things do add up. And the best way to know how much food you're getting is to measure your portions. And although measuring cups and scales are you know, very good for that, they're not a necessity. There are a number of household items you can use to measure the foods that you're eating and make sure you're eating sensible portions. So on this slide, we have a few examples of things that we are probably all familiar with. Um, a three ounce steak would be about the size of an iPod Classic or an iPhone, a pancake, would be about the size of a DVD or Blu-ray disc. And when you're at your computer, your mouse, that is about the average size of a potato or a sweet potato. Um, and I'll let Kristen go into a little more detail on estimating portion sizes. So I will be doing uh, estimating portion sizes. And for this first one, it's meats, poultry, fish, and nut butters. And three ounces of meat, fish, or poultry should be about the size of a deck of cards, or an iPod. All right. So usually when you go to the store and you buy, let's say, a package, a package of chicken breasts, those are usually about way more than three or four ounces, and that's the serving size for them. So just whenever you're you know, at the grocery store and you're buying your chicken, you take it home and you're thinking, okay, well, how do I do the serving size if I don't have a food scale to measure it on? You can always just think of the deck of cards or look at your iPod player and say, hey, yeah, that's about three ounces of chicken or meat or fish. And so three ounces of grilled or baked fish should be about the size of, let's say, a checkbook. Okay, and then two teaspoons uh, or tables, two tablespoons of peanut butter should be about uh, the size of a ping pong ball or a golf ball. So uh, next is oils, and uh, the serving size for a one for oils such as butter or mayonnaise uh, should be about one teaspoon. So if you look at the tip of your thumb, that should be about one teaspoon or a stamp. It's quite small. And then the portion size for salad dressing is usually one tablespoon for a regular salad dressing and then two tablespoons for light, reduced, or fat-free salad dressing. And I know you're thinking, okay, one tablespoon or two tablespoons, that's not really a lot. But if you toss the salad very well, then you can, you'll notice that it really does go a long way. So just keep that in mind. Um, 
And although an avocado is a healthy fat, the calories do add up. So the serving size for an avocado is three slices or two tablespoons of guacamole, which is about the size of a ping pong ball or a golf ball. And this is about 50 calories. So next is uh, estimated portions for dairy and cheese. And when you go to an ice cream store, you will notice that uh, the portion that you get is definitely not half a cup, which is the serving size. And uh, half a cup could be about the equivalent of half of a baseball. So if you can imagine a baseball in your head cut in half, that would be half a cup. Um, one and a half ounces of cheese, or uh, that's also about two slices of cheese, is the size of a nine volt battery, or four of these stacked. Uh, and then the serving of milk is one cup or eight ounces, which is the size of a baseball or a tennis ball. Next is grains, and here's some um, common service, serving sizes for uh, grains. So cereal is one cup, which is uh, the size of your fist or a baseball. And then a pancake is the size of a CD, the size of a CD. And then uh, rice, pasta, and potatoes is a half a cup, and again, it's about half of a baseball. And then bread is one slice or the size of a cassette tape. And if you're wondering, okay, what's a cassette tape? Uh, you could also look at your cell phone and say, hey, that's about the serving size of bread. Unless you have a really big cell phone, then I wouldn't use that as a, <laughs> as a reference. Um, and then cornbread is the size of a bar of soap. Next is vegetables and fruit. And a serving of vegetables is half a cup of is half a cup of cooked vegetables or one cup of raw vegetables. And uh, like Wes had mentioned before, uh, one medium fruit is the serving size, which is the size of a baseball or a tennis ball. And usually, when you go to the store, the portions are way bigger. An orange looks to be about the size of a softball rather than a baseball. So just kind of be in the ballpark of baseball. So a serving of fruit or 100% fruit juice is half a cup or the size of half of a baseball. <laughs> and then uh, one fourth cup of dried fruit, such as raisins or cranberries, cherries, etc., is equal to the size of a golf ball. All right, so now we're going on, we're talking about soft drinks. And as you can see, um, when it first started out, it was just eight ounces. And eight ounces is only about 97 calories. And then we went, moved on to the can, which is 12 ounces, and that is 145 calories. And then now we have the 20 ounce bottle, which is 242 calories. So as you can see, a lot of calories come from the soft drinks. So just you know, if you do drink a lot of uh, regular soft drinks, just you may want to cut back on that. And um, when you go to convenience stores, you will notice when you go to the fountain drink area, the uh, drink cups are rather large, as you can see with the big gulp. And um, let's just think about how many eight ounce servings are in one of these. It's probably about five or six, which is around 500 to 600 calories. That's pretty much a meal. So maybe, you know, you perhaps want to stay away from these. Okay, now for alcohol. Uh, if you are 21 and over, this slide is for you, or 21 and over and you drink alcohol, this is for you. Uh, serving of wine is five ounces, which is a little more than half of a baseball. So half a cup is four ounces. So a little bit more than um, half a cup. And when you go to a restaurant, usually you know the glass they fill up the glass, and so that's definitely more than the five ounces. And uh, the same goes for a serving of liquor is uh, one and a half ounces, 
And so your drink from a bar or restaurant may be two or three servings. So when you're at home and you think, okay, one and a half ounce, that's the serving size, just keep that in mind that when you do go to a restaurant, it's probably more than one and a half ounces. And then the serving of beer is 12 ounces, which is one and a half cups. And when, again, when you go to a restaurant or bar, the glasses are rather large, and that's probably around two or three servings. All right, now we're doing uh, the portion sizes for common snacks. For pretzels, the serving size is 16 to 18 pretzels or a small handful. For potato chips, the serving size is 12 chips or a small bag. For baked chips, the serving size is 15 chips or a small bag. The serving size of hummus is two tablespoons or the size of a golf ball. The serving for almonds is one ounce or about 23 nuts. When you measure out the nuts, you know, be sure to just get a small handful. And always be sure to read the nutrition facts label to make sure that you are getting the correct serving size because they are all different. Okay, estimated portions for baked goods and breads. When you go to a bakery or go to a grocery store where there's a bakery, you will notice that the muffins and cupcakes and bagels, they are you know, rather large and they are usually more than the serving size. So they're probably around two or three servings. So if you go to the store and you buy a muffin, uh, you should probably you know, cut that in half and that will be the you know, appropriate amount. And you could either save the other half for the next day or you can throw it away if you want to do that. Um, the same is for uh, bagels. As you can see from 20 years ago, uh, the bagels you know, were smaller and they were 140 calories. And now they are much larger and they are 350 calories. Uh, so, you know, if you want to get the appropriate amount, you can either just eat half of it or you can scoop out the inside and toast it, or you can just buy the mini bagels. All right, so here's some tips for um, eating at home. And, oh, shockingly, studies have shown that people are usually eat what is in front of them. So this tip and the last tip um, kind of coincide with one another. So since we do want to eat what's in front of us when you are eating at the table, you probably don't want to have the serving dishes on the table because you will be more inclined to want to eat more than one serving. And uh, you also want to reduce the size of your plates, cups, bowls, and mugs. And uh, the My Plate is based off of a nine inch plate. So this is the nine inch plate. But usually what people have at home is the 11 you know, or 12 inch. So let's compare. This is way smaller. This is rather large. So as you can see, you know, when you're getting your, um, your dinner ready and let's say you put it on a plate this size, you, you'll probably look at that and say, oh my gosh, I'm eating nothing. And so then you end up you know, putting more on there. Whereas if you use this, then you, are, you, know, you look at it, you're like, oh wow, I'm eating so much. So you're kind of tricking your mind into thinking that you really are eating more than you know, what you are actually eating. Okay, so when eating meals at restaurants, uh, the portion sizes at restaurants are just ridiculous. Ridiculous. They are rather large. So, um, you know, you may want to order an appetizer instead of an actual entree because the portions are smaller and you can usually, you know, you can split that uh, with a friend if you want. Um, the same goes for, you know, you could order an entree and that's usually, you know, you could eat that could feed like you know three or four people so you can split a meal with a friend and that will you know save on cost as well you can tell your server to package up half the meal before it even comes out or when your meal does come out you can ask for a box and um, go ahead and put half away so that you're not um, inclined to want to eat all of it right then and I know our parents have always told us, oh, you can't eat that, you know, you don't want to spoil your dinner, spoil your appetite. Well, I'm here to tell you, do it. Spoil your appetite. 
uh, go for it. Have a small snack, um, protein-packed snack, such as low-fat string cheese, or a few slices of turkey, or a glass of milk, so that when you do go to a restaurant, you won't be as, you won't be starving. So then you won't eat as much. Also, you know, you want to chew slowly and just enjoy the conversation with the people that you're eating with. And you know, if you're with you know friends or relatives. Um, you know, you want to enjoy the time with them. Maybe not so much if you're with your relatives. You may want to eat kind of quickly, but uh, just, you know, be sure, <laughs> be sure to do that. So uh, it's okay to leave food at the table. I know that, you know, we, we sometimes feel that, you know, we should eat everything on our plate, but that's, you know, not necessary. So just remember that if the food goes to waste, it's not going to your waste. Okay. So here's some more tips. When you go to a buffet, just get one plate. You know, don't go too crazy, you know, and get four or five plates. Because when you go to a restaurant, you don't order, you know, two or three entrees. So when you go to a buffet, uh, just, you know, be sure to just, you know, get small amounts and just get that one plate. And the same goes for salad bars. You don't eat multiple salads, so just have that one salad. And then uh, for fast food, um, I don't want to you know, discourage you from you know, going out and eating fast food. So if you are you know, craving a burger, you know, go for it. Go buy a burger. Just don't get you know, one of those huge burgers. Just go ahead and buy a junior or a small burger. And then the same with um, chicken and fries. Like if you're you know, just craving some chicken and some greasy fries, uh, you can try ordering a kid's meal. And the kid's meal, one, it's cheaper and it's smaller portions. So we are coming to the conclusion of this presentation. And um, you know, I just want you to you know, remember to measure out your food, you know, either using measuring cups or estimate how much uh, you're taking in by comparing the amount of food to everyday household items. When eating at home, don't leave serving dishes out on the table, keep them in the kitchen. And then when out of a restaurant, either order a small plate or entree, leave half your food on the table, take half of your food home with you or split a meal with a friend. And when you're at a buffet, only get one plate of food. And when it comes to fast food, if you don't want to supersize your waistline, then don't supersize your order. Thank you.